friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams for yet another Vlogmas video. Today, I'm going to be doing a big old book haul because what other kind of book haul do I do? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a small book haul on my channel. And that's just the way it is. And you would think that in December, because I'm doing the book exchange with Sarah and Lindsay, that I wouldn't have done a big book haul. But Black Friday happened and Book Outlet had their sale. And of course... I had to get a big old box from Book Outlet. So I'm gonna start with those, but I also have a pile here from Second and Charles where I took back half of the books that I unhauled. Last month you saw a huge unhaul on my channel. I brought half of them to the, well, I sold some of them on, on Instagram and, and through this channel, which was awesome. Um, I was excited to get them into your hands, uh, but then I took the rest of them, to, well, some of the rest of them, and I have a massive amount of credit, and I used up some of that credit for some books. I have one from a little free library, one I ordered from Amazon, and a few that were sent to me. So let's just jump right in, because I have a ton of books. I'll do the book outlet ones first. I love watching what people get from book outlet, because there's just so many books on there, and I feel like I always miss some, but I'm really excited about the ones that I got. The first ones I'm not going to really show you. I picked up a few board books, five board books. Um, I nanny a few younger kids and have a friend from church who has a little one. Uh, so I picked up some, actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you. Who cares? Duck and Goose. Goose needs a hug. Um, I picked up two of these Trailblazers books. This is a girl power trainer. So this, or primer, excuse me. This talks about some influential women. This is a fun book for little girls. Um, and then two Sandra Boynton because I just love her. So I have Dinosaur Dance and Are You a Cow? So I have to decide which of my littles that I'm going to give those to for Christmas. But I love that Book Outlet helped me get some Christmas gifts. Thanks, Book Outlet. I did pick up this super cute edition of Little Women. I prefer paperbacks. I'm reading this one in December. I hate the library copy that I have. So I'm not motivated to pick it up. So I wanted to have, a, I wanted to first of all own my own copy of Little Women. There are so many beautiful editions, but I feel like this, because it is paperback, will be super readable for me and my preference. And I'm planning on bringing this home to my mom's when I go to New York for Christmas because I feel like sitting by my mom's wood stove and reading Little Women is just going to be the perfect Christmas experience. <laughs> So I'm bringing this one home and we'll be reading it right around Christmas time. I picked up a Pride and Prejudice Christmas book, Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz. I've heard of this author, but I don't think I've read anything by her. But this is a, you know, uh, Austin inspired kind of adaptation of Pride and Prejudice that happens around Christmas time. I'm down. I'm down for that as always. I picked up another in a series that I'm collecting, Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. I think this is book six. So I have one, two, three, I think I need four and five. I don't know, I have to double check, but this was the only one that was available on Book Outlet on Black Friday, so I just grabbed it because I know that I would like this whole series. One that I heard about a lot here on Booktube a year or so ago is The Trouble with Goats and Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. I know Robin from The Driftless Reader, I believe, read this and really liked it. I think April from Getting Hooked With It also really liked it. Those two women, if they recommend a book, I'm I'm interested already. So I wanted to pick this one up. I've been looking at, for it at Second and Charles. Every time I go, it's on my list of ones to look for, and I haven't found it. So when I saw it on Book Outlet, I threw it in my cart. This year, a couple months ago, I read The Dry, and this is book two in that uh trilogy maybe by Jane Harper. This takes place in Australia in the outback and one of the characters from the dry is in this as well so I'm not sure if it continues the story from the dry or if we just follow him in another case. He's a federal agent in Australia so I'm looking forward to reading more from her. I picked up another middle grade uh, Escape from Aleppo. This is by N.H. Senzai and I am always looking for historical fiction. This is recent recent history, um, refugee crisis and um, ISIS and all of that. So I just feel like this is an important topic for young readers to read about and I'm really interested in reading it. I haven't heard anybody review it or talk about it. So yeah, I'm very eager to pick up this one, probably in middle grade March. Um, I grabbed a book by Beatrice Williams. I have a couple from her now. I have only read one and I honestly don't remember what the name of it is. It was about a boat crossing, not the Titanic, but a, like a big boat and rich people crossing the Atlantic and there was a mystery and I really liked it. Um, and I've heard good things about Beatrice Williams, historical fiction, uh, not World War II. So I'm, I'm very interested in reading more from her. This one takes place 1964, 
she, this woman, Vivian, works in a magazine, but then the editor dismisses her. Uh, but we also have a 1912 storyline as well. So the dual timelines, I don't know, historical fiction. I'm interested in checking out more Beatrice Williams, so we'll see about that one. A YA that has been on my kind of want to read list for a long time, I don't even remember who talked about it, was Wait for Me by Caroline Leach. This is a World War II historical fiction and just been one that I've been wanting to get forever, so I was happy to purchase it from Book Outlet. I'm very excited about this one, Maud from Melanie Fishbane. This is a retelling, sort of, a novel. This is a novel inspired by the life of Ellen Montgomery, whom you should know at this point that I really love Ellen Montgomery. I really need to read all of her works, but Anne is one of my all-time favorite characters and books, and I'm determined someday to travel to Prince Edward Island and kind of do all of the Anne things on Prince Edward Island. Um, but yeah, I just thought this is a gorgeous cover and I I think I heard some mixed reviews about this book when it first came out from other Ella Montgomery lovers, but I was interested enough that for a few bucks I threw it into my cart on Book Outlet. Just two more from Book Outlet. I have Paris by the Book by Liam Callanan. This is a book for book lovers, I'm sure. There's a bit of a mystery. This novelist goes missing, and I think there are clues that are left in books. As the family settles into their new Parisian, Parisian, I can't say that word, life, they trace the literary paths of beloved classics, par Parisian classics, hoping the books will lead them to Robert. So there's a little bookish mystery going on here. I'm really excited for that. And um, a book that I've, or an author that I've heard about through Instagram is Erica Bauermeister, and this is Joy for Beginners. And this just looks cozy and summery. I think this one involves second chances, somebody with a threatening illness, friendship, female friendships. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but I've just, um, the, the people that I've seen talk about it on Bookstagram are people that I trust their book recommendations. So I am excited to give Erica Bauermeister a try this year. This is my second book I think I picked up from her. Have yet to read any. Okay, that's it from Book Outlet. Let me go through the books that I picked up at Second and Charles. Um, I grabbed The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I really like this edition of it. This is a book that I saw a lot of people reading during Victober and heard that it's very readable and approachable as far as classics go. And it's definitely one that I'm interested in uh, for Victober next year. If I can wait that long, we shall see. I grabbed another Beatrice Williams book overseas. And this one happens in dual timelines again, France 1916 and New York 2007. Um, yeah, I don't really know much more about it, but I just want to read more Beatrice Williams. So I grabbed it. I picked up books two and three in the Maisie Dobbs series. Um, I don't think that I'm going to own the whole series, but I do want to work on series that I started, and this is one that I started in 2019. So I have Birds of a Feather and Pardonable Lies by Jacqueline Winspear. These are historical mysteries, and Maisie Dobbs is this young woman who, in the first book, just starts out her detective agency kind of like her business as a detective so I'm looking forward to reading more in that series and seeing if it's a series that I want to go all the way through or just a couple is enough I don't know we'll have to wait and see an author that I have read before and really loved is Christina McMorris Bridge of Scarlet Leaves is this one which the cover is stunning um, and I don't know anything about it except that I've read Christina McMorris I read The Island of the Lost I'm excited to give her another chance because I really liked her first one an author that I read two books from in 2019 that I really liked is Sarah Addison Allen and so I picked up Lost Lake uh, because she's an author I'd like to read everything that she's written magical realism is not typically my genre but she does it really well the two books that I've read from her are incredibly charming and I'm hoping that this has that same charm and feel um, and yeah it looks like a very good spring slash summer read we'll see this next one is another one that has been on my want to read list for a while it's the good people by hannah kent this is another one i've heard mixed things about i really did like burial rights i liked the writing style and the way that she wrote that story so i'm just interested in trying this one out and seeing what i think about it well i again don't know anything about it except the author's name is somebody that i've read <laughs> Another author that I have a couple books now under my shelves from her is Fiona, Fiona Davis, and this one is The Address. 
I think I own the dollhouse now and something else as well, maybe. I forget what I own from her, but this one um, takes place in the late 1800s, 1885 maybe, and this big old apartment house that is being built in New York City and the goings on of there. I believe there's a little bit of a mystery and then we kind of follow 100 years later, um, a interior design student is ready for some new opportunities and is going to take over remodeling or redoing or something with this house. So again with that dual timeline thing that I love and some historical fiction that's not World War II. I love World War II but I have a lot of it on my shelves already so I'm always trying to branch out. I just grabbed this one The Hamilton Affair by Elizabeth Cobb. Hamilton was recently here in Richmond and so many people got to go see it and I didn't. I've seen it in New York a couple years ago but because people have been talking about it a lot it's been on my mind so when I saw this one at uh at Second and Charles I thought I would throw it in my bag. I haven't read anything about Hamilton whether biography or novelizations of his life or anything so I think that this might be kind of interesting. I heard somebody on booktube talk about this one a while ago. This is a World War II historical fiction Orphan Monster Spy by Matt Killeen. Um, the Nazis just see a little blonde girl but she's their worst nightmare. I think it's somebody who ends up having to work with Hitler, but she ends up spying for the allies. So should be good. I heard good. I heard that it was good. And then I heard about this one um, when Claire Gibson was interviewed by Sarah from Sarah's Bookshelves Lives podcast. Um, and she talked about her book quite a bit. And so I was thrilled when I found it at Second and Charles. This is beyond the point. Um, it is, this is the book of the month edition of it, but this um, follows three women who went to West Point and their lives kind of in college and thereafter. Um, they're athletes uh, and they went to military school. So I'm very excited to um, read this one. I, after hearing Claire Gibson talk, I'm, I was very intrigued by her book. Um, I found one at a little free library the other day, and that is John Boyne's Stay Where You Are and Then Leave. This is a middle grade book set during World War I, so a little bit different. Um, he did write The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I've read and now have a new copy of, thanks to my 12 Books of Christmas Exchange. Um, but he also wrote a couple adult books that are that are very popular. Uh, Letter to the Sky, I think, wasn't as big as The Heart's Invisible Furies, which everybody seems to love. I haven't read any of his adult books, but um, I did love The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, so I'm excited to give another one of his middle grade books a chance. The book that I bought from Amazon is a book that I first heard about from Brie, Brie Hill, um, years ago. Like way back when both of us kind of first started our booktube channel, or at least when I was at the beginning of my channel. It's a nonfiction called Juliet's Answer, One Man's Search for Love and the Elusive Care for Heartbreak by Glenn Dixon. I um, have not been able to get this from the library and I always look for it when I'm in the bookstores and stuff and I never saw it. So one day randomly, I kind of threw it in my Amazon cart. This teacher had a breakup and ends up going to Italy and working with the women who answer Letters to Juliet. So kind of reminds me of that movie, Letters to Juliet or something like that. But it's a nonfiction, so it's a true story that has a similar feel. The last little pile here are books that were sent to me this month. I'm very excited about this one, The 25 Songs of Christmas. This is by BJ Richardson, who is my brother. He uh, takes 25 Christmas songs and writes a short story slash essay, really, um, about kind of focused on that song and like the words of the song or the theme of that Christmas song. There are stories from our childhood in here, stories about the grief that we've experienced as a family losing my dad um, 20 years ago. Um, there are some other personal stories in here, some faith based story. Well, it's all faith based kind of devotional thoughts about the original Christmas story with baby Jesus and the nativity and all of that. So this is just a fantastic little gift book. It's teeny tiny. You could read it like one a day kind of as an advent thing uh, leading up to Christmas if you buy it for next year. I will put the Amazon link down below if you're interested in purchasing this gift. There's still time to get it for, for, before Christmas. It will make a, a lovely little gift book for yourself or for a friend. Um, and that is a, a very obvious not shameless plug for my brother's book. I'm super proud of him. The dedication is not to me. I always joked with him that when he writes a book finally, because he's such a good writer, I always joked with him that when he finally publishes a book that he needs to dedicate it to me because all of the, the hard things I put him through. 
<laughs> as we were growing up made him into the man he is, right? So no, this is not dedicated to me, but that's okay. I still think that you should check it out and see if it's something that you might want to get. I did a trade with Nicole from the Girly Girl Bookworm and I saw her talking about trading books on her channel and when she was doing an unhaul I was like hey I want those dude do, do you want to trade here's some things that I'm getting rid of <laughs> and it worked out really well so she picked two from my pile and sent me two from her pile so she sent me Blood for Blood by Ryan Groudon which I read a few years ago and I own Wolf by Wolf but I didn't own the second one Blood for Blood so now I'm thrilled that I have both of these I really did like this duology it's YA kind of alternate history where um, the Axis powers win World War II. So Japan and Germany are now in charge. There's this motorcycle race and this young woman who is a shape shifter, skin shifter, I should say maybe, skin shifter. Because of um, horrors that she experienced during the war, medical um, experiments that were done on her, she is now, she now has the ability to change her looks. And so she enters this motorcycle race um, as uh, and hopes to win the race so that she can get close to Hitler and kill him. That is the whole premise of the book. Um, this is the this is the follow up. That's the whole premise of Wolf by Wolf. That this is the follow up to it. I really did enjoy this duology, and I'm glad that I now own it. And also, I chose from Nicole the Little Shop of Found Things by Paula Braxton. This just looks like the sweetest little book. I forget even what this is about, but I've heard good things. Antique Shop, Haunted by a Ghost, takes place in England. I don't know, just like cozy and little things. I just feel like this is a book that I'm gonna really love. When I sold some of the books that I was selling from my unhaul a couple months ago, or last month I should say, uh, one of the women who bought a book for me sent a book to me as well. And it's the Jane Austen Society, a novel by Natalie Jenner. And this is an ARC. It comes out May in 2020. I have never heard of this, so I'm really excited. I'm going to put it in my pile to read a little bit before it comes out so I can let you know about it. But you guys know I love Jane Austen inspired books. This kind of feels like, like a Jane Austen book club type of situation. And it says fans of the Chilbury Ladies Choir, which I have on my shelves but haven't read, and the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which I did love, will adore this book, which tells the story of an eclectic group of people set in a post-World War II village who come together and save the beloved author's home and legacy. Yeah, this sounds like something I'm really going to enjoy. Sounds charming. The last two books are middle grade books that I was sent by publishers. Um, the first one was sent to me by Quirk Books and it's Kid Activists, True Tales of Childhood from Champions of Change. And this talks about like the childhood lives of Martin Luther King Jr., um, Alexander Hamilton, Emma Watson, Nelson Mandela, Helen Keller, just a bunch of people who have uh, in instigated change in their adult lives like what they were like as kids as well so that just sounds fantastic uh this is stories by robin stevenson and there are illustrations by allison um, steinfeld so if you have any kids in your lives that you need to buy books for for christmas this is just really sweet short story um non-fiction about these uh amazing people so I'm really excited to check this one out. Thank you Quirk Books for sending me this. And then I got this box from Little Bee Books and I was not expecting it. And I'm really excited. I haven't really opened it up yet because I wanted to open it with you. But I had never really received a, bo a book from a publisher that came with goodies. So uh, this was super cute. It came with fortune cookies, some little jelly gummies, some washi tape, which is a lot of fun. A couple a couple fun pens and then oh there's another washi tape um, some little cutesy erasers which I will pass along to the kids that the little girl that I watch she's gonna love that pens and pencils these little confetti which will be great for helping to decorate Christmas gifts and then a book and the book is jelly this is by Joe Cotterell I feel like I've read something else by Joe Cotterell what else did she write I forget. I might have to look it up and let you know. It's better to laugh than to cry, right? This is an ARC and it comes out in January of 2020. So I'll be reading this right away. 
in January. Angelica, Jelly for short, is the queen of comedy at school, famous for her impressions. If a classmate calls her a walrus to make fun of her weight, she sticks her two index fingers in her mouth and does her best walrus growl and laughs it off. But Jelly isn't as confident as she pretends to be. No one knows her deepest thoughts and feelings. She keeps those hidden away in a secret notebook. Then her mom's new boyfriend, Lennon, enters the picture. He's kind and perceptive and becomes the first person to realize that Jelly is hiding how she really feels behind a smile. She shares her poetry with him and he convinces her to perform one of her poems as a song at the school talent show. But can Jelly risk letting people see the real her? This sounds really awesome. So it sounds like it's going to deal with body image and self-confidence. And I love that there's poetry. I love that it's going to deal with some of these issues in an interesting way. Hopefully, I'm really excited to read this. Thank you so much, Little B, for sending me this book. I'll put a link to Little B down below so you can check out what else they they uh, put out there. But awesome. Very exciting. And that's it. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> this is 25 minutes long. Oh, I'm going to have fun editing this. If you've read any of these books, or if you think I should add any, bump any up to the top of my TBR, go ahead and let me know that down below or talk about anything else. You guys always know that I love talking with you down in the comments. I'm a little behind on my Vlogmas comments, but I'm doing my best to, to respond to some every day. Hopefully I will get to all of them sometime. <laughs> we'll see when. But yeah, let's chat down in the comments below. Check out all the links of the things that I put down below and I will be seeing you in another video tomorrow. Bye.